Well, good morning. That's me, Mitch. And I just wanted to reiterate the conclusion that I came to at the end of the last video, part one of this. And that was that all that you need to do, and it's very simple, to actually get started is change what you eat. You don't need to worry about exercise. You don't need to worry about all the other things like standing out here in the morning sun. You only need to concentrate on what you eat. And that's one of the big benefits of the carnivore lifestyle is that the shopping and eating part is simplicity itself. It's almost as though it would require no thought consciously whatsoever. Wait, isn't that how every other animal on the planet lives except humans? Okay, we're back. And so far in this two or three week journey that I've been on, talking about carnivore on YouTube, after I did convert my drone channel over, I've actually got some interest from the carnivore community, got some new subscribers, so welcome and thank you. And I've talked about some of the things that have happened to me, some of the discoveries that I've made. And what I want to do now is actually talk about my version of the carnivore diet. Not that my version is really any different than the hundreds of other influencers that you see on YouTube telling you how to start a carnivore diet, but I've learned just a lot about food addiction, about the pitfalls of dieting after 50 years of doing it. And I've incorporated what I've learned into what I think is would be a good starting point. Now, let me just give you a disclaimer right up front. Number one, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I don't have degrees in those things. I want to go over with you a list of steps that I would recommend anyone take if they were really um, interested in starting this diet. I know there's been a lot of advice Pretty much every influencer and every content provider out there in our space has a video that says how to start the carnivore diet. And this is mine. So here we go. Okay. Starting the carnivore diet, the guide to the first 30 days. And what I'm talking about here is just the first 30 days. Don't think about what's going to happen after the 30 days. Focus on just trying to do these things and get through those first 30 days. Because what has to happen is there are major physiological changes that need to happen in your body at a cellular level, affecting your metabolism, to start you on the process of converting your body from burning sugar for energy as a prime source to for a burning fat. And you've heard that referred to as, as becoming a fat burner. So that is what the first 30 days is about. It's not about losing weight. It's not about curing all your illnesses. It is about just concentrating on simple things where you don't have to think a lot and letting your body start the process to convert from a sugar burner to a fat burner. There's many ways to start that, that I've seen out there on the internet, on YouTube. Um, you can wean off the standard American diet, and some people find that that's the only way they can do it. And, you know, these three different things I put here, you're going to have to uh, decide which one you want to do. I recommend cold turkey, but uh, we're a, a, a combination of cold turkey and priming, but we'll get into that in a minute. 
But uh, weaning off the standard American diet are those people that just can't handle uh, the switch from a very high carb junk food diet, burning sugar, uh, after a lifetime of damage to their body where uh, the fat burning pathways haven't been used in so long that it takes a while to wake them back up. Uh, cold turkey is you wait, you know, you Sunday night you go to sleep, Monday morning you wake up and you are a carnivore. Um, priming is something I heard on Bart K's channel, and this is his idea. And Bart K thinks not only should you just eat meat for the first 30 days, but you should absolutely stuff yourself with meat. Try to eat almost 6,000 calories. Eat until you can't even look at food. Don't worry about anything, but just keep eating it. Keep eating, keep eating bacon, eggs, butter, beef, uh, any kind of meat will really do. Uh, beef is going to be the best for you. But that's priming. Uh, I have not talked to anybody that has ever done that, but um, who knows? Who knows? It's out there. Okay, step one. Just concentrate on what you eat. Animal products and associated fats only. Bacon, butter, eggs, fatty beef, those should be prioritized. No plant foods whatsoever, including grains, seed oils, which they call vegetable oils, but they're really industrial seed oils at all. You can have some high fat dairy, uh, full fat cheeses, heavy cream. They're okay if you can tolerate them, but it's, I think it's better to leave them out too for the first 30 days. Now this sounds like it's going to be impossible to do, but virtually everybody has gone through this who has started the carnivore diet and most people will uh, testify that after a couple weeks, it, 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 the worst was over. And, and if they, you know, just decided they didn't want to quit, that they, they succeeded. They succeeded. Okay, step two, take steps to make your environment carnivore ready. Now, this has to do with eliminating things that trigger you. Uh, it means that clean out your pantry, clean out your refrigerator, clean out the drawers in, in your desk at work, clean out the cubbies in your car, throw all the candy bars, the junk food, the pasta, throw everything away, everything, get rid of it. If it's not an animal product, Try, if you can, to set up your life for 30 days where you don't have to be around that stuff. Now, that is easier said than done, especially, especially if you're living with, with three or four people who think you're stupid, don't like what you're doing, and they'll be damned if they're going to throw away their junk food too. But this is a personal thing, and, and I've just found that if it's there, if it's around you, it's going to make it a hundred times harder. So everybody suggests to clean up your environment. You need to go to the store and you need to buy at least a week's worth of food uh, that you're going to be allowed to eat. So you're going to, and it's going to be this first trip to the grocery store may seem expensive, but you're not going to be spending money on bags of this and pizzas and donuts and stuff. So. I think if you add it all up, you'll find out that this is really cheaper. But you stock up on foods you've decided to eat and make sure you always have them on hand. Always. Make sure you strive, and this is very important, for a 50-50 ratio of fat to protein. Now, that's measured in grams. If, you, if you're counting it in calories, it's 70% fat and 30% protein. This is very important. Most people fail during the first 30 days of their carnivore diet because they simply don't get enough fat. Much better, much better that you overeat the fat than undereat the fat. This is important. This is important. You are trying to become a fat burner after all. You can't be a fat burner if you're not feeding yourself fat. So eat the fat goes against everything that you've ever heard, that you've ever believed. They've been told all your life that fat makes you fat. It doesn't. Sugar makes you fat. 
I'm living proof that fat makes you thin. Then just decide how you're going to cook these things in a way that you really like and that you're going to find delicious because it's very important for you during the first 30 days to enjoy the food that you're eating. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the flavor, savor it, eat it. Uh, so figure out how you're going to cook, you know, how you're going to cook this food. I just put up a video about cooking a steak and I've got a number of other food prep videos are going to be coming down the line, but there's only so much you can do, you know, right off the bat. Don't even think about intermittent fasting or exercise. Not that they're bad, they're good. Not that you won't incorporate those things into your routine after the 30 days. You will, absolutely. But for the first 30 days, just eat. Just eat. As far as ketones go, forget ketones. Don't get keto strips. Don't piss on them and see if they turn purple. And for God's sakes, don't ever during the first 30 days step on the bathroom scale. It doesn't matter. You're not trying to lose weight. You're not, it doesn't matter. You're trying to totally change your metabolic chemistry. That's all that you want to do during the first 30 days. Now, odds are you'll lose some weight, but it's not important. Even if you gain weight, it doesn't matter. Concentrate only on eating. Learn to recognize the onset of any cravings and always have some food ready to eat at all times. You can have bacon pre-cooked. You can cook up a dozen hamburger patties and just leave them in the refrigerator cold, either eat them cold or throw them in the microwave. Leftover steak, leftover chicken if you've got that in there, but always have food ready to eat. If you go somewhere, throw it in a, in a Ziploc bag and take some with you. If you ever, ever think, wow, some ice cream would, would be good right now, immediately stuff your face with, with meat. The cravings will go away and you won't derail this. And I'm telling you, if you don't do these things, you will derail it, especially if you're a carb addict like I was. Follow your own body's lead and eat when you're hungry or when you experience any cravings and stop eating. Ken Berry says, when you're comfortably stuffed, others say when it stops tasting delicious. However, when you feel like, okay, I'm okay for now. If 20 minutes later you find you're still hungry, get more food, eat eat. That's your job for 30 days. Stuff your face. Don't ever get out of the situation where you feel like, God, I could really use some food. You want to be in a mental state where you're saying to yourself, holy cow, I don't, I, I don't think I could eat for another three days. That's the way you want to feel. And interestingly enough, after you get adapted to this stuff, you'll feel that way all the time. I feel that way now. I always feel that way. I, I never feel like, oh my God, I got to get food or I'm going to die. Never. You're trying to change your body back into the default metabolic state that our ancestors evolved in over millions of years. Now, it's a good idea during the first 30 days to make sure you get plenty of hydration and you, and you supplement with electrolytes and drink water if you want, black coffee, tea, don't worry about it. Uh, but make sure that you, you get the magnesium, potassium, and especially salt, especially sodium. Uh, there's a lot of supplements out there. Everybody advertises them, Element. Uh, there's a ton of them. Uh, some people make their own. Uh, some people take extra magnesium like I do. I take anywhere between 400 and 800 milligrams a day of, uh, of magnesium 
uh, in that way, I don't get leg cramps or anything. But during the first 30 days of this diet, you're probably going to just, you're going to be losing a lot of sugar. And along with the sugar is going to go a lot of water. And along with that lot of water is going to go a lot of the electrolytes that you have in your body. So that is very, very important. If you ever were to get any leg cramps or anything like that, just, just take the electrolytes. Now, this first 30 days, like I said, is only an adaption period. You don't have to think, my God, I can't do this for the rest of my life. You're not going to be doing exactly this for the rest of your life. You don't have to. Nobody's making you do anything. This is up to you. You're grownups. You decide to do it and just do it. This isn't a challenge. You're not being compared against anybody else. This is not one of those things. This is what I did, and boy, did it work. Do not think, and this is so important. This is not just for the first 30 days. This is one of what I think should be the cardinal rules of sustaining any lifestyle that you accomplish. I will never, ever, for the rest of my life, break this rule. But this is just as important during the 30 days. And that is, do not think you can make carnivore or keto versions of any food that you are addicted to. It's a bad idea. And this includes drinks as well. That means all of those videos you see on YouTube that tell you how to make carnivore pizza and carnivore bread and carnivore cookies and carnivore mashed potatoes and carnivore this and carnivore that. They should have right above all that nonsense. Learn how to sabotage your diet, make carnivore pizza. And there is a reason why these things sabotage your diets. And that reason is out of your control. And that reason is you are teasing your body with a non-satisfying version of a food you're addicted to. And after you give it enough of that, your brain will figure it out and say, the hell with this. This ain't doing the trick for me. I want pizza and I'm going to have pizza because I'm not seeing the chemicals in this crap that they've been feeding me. And this is what happens. So you start out and you make yourself a carnivore pizza and it has carbs and your body gets the carbs and your body says, ooh, carbs, but not enough. That's not what I'm used to when I eat pizza. And it tastes great. Tastes just like the real pizza, but it's not real pizza. Be like putting gasoline flavored water in your car. <laughs> the car knows the difference. <laughs> you, you can't do it. It, it is, it has ruined more keto diets. Now, carnivore is harder to make imitation stuff because at least in keto, you can have some carbs in. And people think by using their carb allotment, making these versions of addictive foods, is going to cure their addiction, they're wrong. Maybe not everybody, but I can tell you from personal experience, I've done it all and it all screws, screws up your, your, your efforts. And interestingly enough, when you just stay away from any pizza, real pizza, keto pizza, if you stay away from any pizza in a very short period of time, you forget what pizza is. You don't even think about it anymore. So that's a very, very important tip that you're going to keep hearing from me if you keep watching this old guy making videos. My final thoughts here on the first 30 days, and I know this has gone a little long, but it's important. And I wanted to have it down so that people, if they wanted to rewatch this, could rewatch it. And I'll just read this. I have many rules and suggestions that will apply to sustaining carnivore after the adaptation phase. Don't worry about that for now. Keep it simple. You may not feel good. You may have wild bathroom adventures. 
You may gain a few pounds. You may lose a few pounds. And it is best to stay off the scale. You got to know and accept the fact that it will get easier in a very short period of time. An amazing transformation is starting to occur down in the basic cellular biology as you adapt to a new life of being fat adapted, the state our machinery evolved to best be in. Stay strong. Eventually, you'll not be addicted or a slave to food, but a human animal experiencing food freedom for the first time. And I talked about that in this last video. I used the, the term food freedom. And the opposite of food freedom is food slavery. And everybody in this country pretty much is a food slave. And the only way to achieve this food freedom and food freedom means you, know, you don't care about food. You never think about food. You don't want food. Food pays, plays no part other than fueling you. It's not part of any happiness that, 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 that you have in your life. It's not part of, uh, of, of all of your social activities. It, it plays no part in your life. It is just there to give you building materials, like the Home Depot is there to give you stuff to fix your house with. And you do lose, you do lose the cravings and the hunger for all of this crap. And the reason you lose it is very, very, very simple. Your body, for the first time in your whole life, is not malnourished anymore. You have every amino acid, vitamin, mineral, every building material that your body needs to perform its chemical functions. Nowhere in your body are signals being sent to your brain that we're a little short on uh, this amino acid today. Your brain doesn't even doesn't have to think about how am I going to get some of that stuff into me because I can't do my job. You're going to become a different person. I don't know if that scares you or not, but it is the greatest thing that ever happened to me in all the years I've been on this planet. So thanks for listening, my friends, and I hope this means something to you. This is by no means not up for discussion, uh, and, and I don't claim in any way that this is going to be 100% exactly what everybody should do, especially, and this is important, especially if you're, if you're taking any medications and you're under doctor's care, for certain conditions like diabetes, heart disease, dementia, fatty liver, anything, any of the chronic diseases, um, you need, and this is the hard part, your doctor's going to tell you you're an idiot, but you need to do this with your doctors monitoring your drugs because the odds are, and the odds are good, that uh, even as soon as 30 days, you're going to need to cut back on some of those drugs, especially the, the blood pressure ones. I was on two blood pressure meds and I still couldn't control it. For about 10 months now, I've been off both of those meds and my blood pressure is about 110 over 65 every morning. So it really does work. It really does work. So with that, I'm going to say, see you in the next one. And in the next one, I'm going to talk a lot I always talk a lot, but I'm going to talk a lot about the mindset and what you should know and understand and what you're going to need going forward to basically fight off the entire world giving you bad advice and telling you you're crazy. And that's one of the hardest parts of these things. When you go to your doctor and your doctor says, yeah, your cholesterol's high, you're going to die. Uh, that's scary. That's scary. And that has knocked God knows how many people back to the Twinkies and Donuts. But if you know, if you've seen the research and if you know definitively how all of this ridiculous dietary advice actually came to be, if you knew the corruption involved, the origins of this, 
the absurdity of how we got here is something that you'll never doubt again. And when somebody tells you your cholesterol is going to kill you, you will be certain in your conviction that they're out of their minds. And they've just bought into the myth that has become the reality over the past 60 or 70 years and closing in on becoming a religion almost. And fortunately for us, there are a lot of people that are going against the grain in this. They're fighting the system. They're exposing the fraud and the ignorance. And there's an awful lot of people uh, doing exactly what we're doing. And none of these bad things are happening to them. Only good things are happening to them. As a matter of fact, I just watched a, a video, YouTube video before I did this, Jordan Peterson talking about his life and his five years on carnivore. And uh, he was pointing out some of those pitfalls too. So with that, I'll close this out and I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, as usual, I'll give you the rest of the day off and uh, eat meat.